What's happening everybody, the Poets here. I hope you're doing well and staying safe. Uh, today's video is gonna be a continuation from the past video where I was showing everything that Thermaltake sent me to do this really cool gaming build that I'm putting together here. This is the Thermaltake DistroCase 350P. It's an impressive case. Uh, one, not only just the price tag of $899 just for this, but the feature set alone really makes it unique. So I'm really excited to build in this case. I first saw it at CES 2020 and it's been kind of on my mind since. So this is going to be a lot of fun. What I've been doing overnight has been, you know, basically running the system here, flushing it out and also checking for any potential leaks. Uh, it's past all of that. So I'm going to do my last flush, fill again, and then flush it out. So that's what you're going to see in this video, as well as adding a little bit more hardware. So since I know that this distribution block is not leaking at all, it's been perfect. I'm ready to start the build out process. So this is going to be a bit of a journey. So stick with me in terms of this video and future videos, as well as stay up to date on, you know, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and all that stuff. Every single person on YouTube that builds a water cooling build, and there's vast, vast amounts of that information out there on YouTube, Everybody's going to have their own unique way of doing things because it's custom. That's the whole point of water cooling, in my opinion, is, is that journey of building your build in a way that is almost like an art, you know. So uh, as somebody's making a painting or a pencil drawing, water cooling is kind of the same way because if you put two people in a room uh, or separate rooms, put it that way, with the exact same water cooling hardware, their builds are going to be different. Uh, because they're putting their own creativity into that. So you can take things from the way I do it, the way like Jay's Two Cents or uh, Bitwit or Pulse Hardware. So I, I strongly suggest you look at all three of their styles, check mine out, and then find your own way of doing it. There's just going to be the basics. You need some type of like distribution block or you know reservoir. You need a pump. There's different types of pumps. There's different types of tubing. This is soft tubing. You have hardline tubing, different types of hardline tubing as well. So there's a lot of different creativity options you have out there. So let's get into it. First off, I do have a bucket right here. So that's what this is going to just drain right into. So hopefully it's not going to spill over on me. There we go. I'm just going to open this up here. And then because there's physics and pressure and all that stuff, you have to open up the top right here. There we go. And you'll see all this water start to come on out. And this is just distilled water. And I love this. This drain is at the bottom of the loop or the distribution plate in this particular case. So it all drains out very, very quickly. Once I'm satisfied that it's all out, which it is, close it back up again, because the last thing you want is any type of mess. And then simply, I'm gonna fill it up one last time. This is just more distilled water and just start squeezing. This is a 1000 milliliter bottle. I highly suggest you getting the biggest bottle um, you can because I have smaller ones like 250 milliliters, 500 milliliters, and you always have to kind of go back and refill, go back and refill. Having a thousand is key because I actually have, let me show you here, and this is the fluid I will be using. So this is uh, an unreleased fluid by Thermaltake. I saw this at CES 2020, thought it was really cool. They're still working on it. So maybe it'll be on store shelves soon, maybe it won't, I don't know. But this is really nice fluid, it's slightly textured. But the point of that is this is 1000 milliliters as well. So I can just dump the whole thing into this and start squirting away. Uh, so that's a nice little you know, time saver as well. Additionally, when you get these things, they tend to be very, very small at the tip. Uh, so it takes a long time to squeeze all of this water out. Cut the tip so that it's a much larger opening. So when you start squeezing, then you have a nice good flow rate. So nice little pro tip there. So now as I get toward the top, I pay a bit more attention because I don't want to overfill it. And that's about enough right there. Then what I tend to do is I want to run this for a little bit. So I'll close this up when I first start the pump because I don't want anything to potentially splash out or anything. So I have an external power supply attached to it. You'll see the water comes out here and it's actually flowing into a soft tubing pump that I have connected right here just to kind of complete the loop. And now that it's running, I'll open this up and pour a little bit more water in here. 
and you'll see all the air start to kind of like flow through the system. There we go. Close it up again. So there's air in the pump because it's all kind of going through the system. Turn it off. The air comes out of the pump. Turn it back on. Less air in the pump. Turn it off. And you can kind of see the air kind of like chilling in different areas. So I'll turn it back on. And that kind of helps to jar a lot of the air out because eventually I want all the air to go over here. So I'm just going to fill it up. There we go. Close it up a little bit. And you can adjust the speed of the pump as well. So it's got a nice little dial, if I can reach it from this side. And you can turn it down as well. So it's a very powerful, very fast pump. And if my thumb fingernail wants to get in there. There we go. So you can tell the big difference in speeds with this pump. So I like this pump a lot because you have some flexibility with this. Uh, then additionally, one thing you can do is just kind of pick this up, tilt it. So if you were on my live stream on TikTok last night, um, you saw me pick this up and tilt it numerous times because I found that if you tilt it in a way where the air goes over here, then when you're putting it back right side up, the air floats back up here. You can then open this up and fill it up a little bit more. So that's a nice little quick way to get this whole thing nice and full and get the air out in a very quick manner. Now, once everything is built out, we have the GPU, the CPU, the motherboard, the power supply unit, this is gonna be heavy. So I would suggest having two people you do that with you, um, but there's ways of getting around that. You can just do some simple tips back and forth and stuff as well. But this is the main area where you want all the air to accumulate eventually. So this is good. Now I'm just going to turn this off drain it for the last time and open this up. That simple. And done. So I really like the, the well thought out placement of the drain valve here. It's just gonna make filling and draining this thing over and over again so nice and easy because I know myself, once I do a hard line tubing build, I start thinking, oh, maybe if I tweak this tube this way or that way, it'll look so much better or improve the efficiency and all that stuff. Remember, loop order doesn't matter, but sometimes you have things that are just in your head like, oh, what if I did this? It might be a little bit better. So having something like this is gonna be so, so helpful. So now that this is closed, I'm just going to remove this soft tubing. Simple as that, done. Next up is to clean the radiator. So this is a Thermaltake 360 millimeter, 64 millimeter thick radiator. So this is actually the thickest radiator I've ever used. It's so big, it actually has its own drain valve. So let's get into it. So I don't wanna damage this, so I'm gonna keep it on the thing right here. I'm gonna open up both of these and fill it with distilled water. Just gonna put a paper towel underneath because I'm sure I'll spill something. And it doesn't really matter which one you put it in. Just as long as you fill it up and then you start shaking away. And then I actually have this over here that I'm going to dump it out in to tell me if there were actually any like metal shavings or just things from the manufacturing process uh, that was actually in there. That's good enough. So now I'm going to close these up and start shaking like they're morongas. So this is why we leak test. So this backside here was actually not screwed in all the way. So as I lifted it up, a little bit of water came out and I was like, where'd that come from? So just need to be screwed in, no big deal. And now we start shaking away. Okay, so now that that's all shaken up, what I'm gonna do is open up both of these and then bring this over and see what comes out. 
and opening up the drain valve and the bottom hats, bottom side. So as you see here, there's a lot of crud, black crud that's in the water here. And you want to entirely avoid this by cleaning your radiators, cleaning your pump, your distribution plate, anything that the water touches thoroughly clean because this would be floating around getting caught in your GPU water blocks, CPU water blocks, reducing performance, and potentially, you know, start some corrosion as well. So always clean your radiators. Now, because this was a lot that came out, I'm going to do my dance about two or three more times until when I fill this up or like empty out the radiator, it's completely clean, all right? So not a single speck of any blackness in here. So let the dancing commence. All right, this is run number two, and there's still a good amount of black crud that is actually formed in here. And I'll try to do a little spinny thing so that it accumulates in the center. There. Oh no, I touched it. But there you go. You can see a lot more in the center there. So clean your rads. This is number two. I'm going to do a number three and possibly a number four, maybe a number five. Shakedown. But you always want this to be clean. Okay, this is going to be drain number four. After a healthy shaking session. And I probably have lost some weight due to this workout. So I'm opening the top here. Let it all flow out. So I don't want to see any of these little black specks at all because they're just going to get caught up in your you know, CPU and GPU blocks. So since this is my fifth time filling this up, I'm getting lazy. I'm just going to use this funnel here and just pour very quickly into this because the squeezy bottle was, has gotten old after the fourth time. Shake, 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 shake. Undo the top. There we go. It's getting better, but still way too many little tiny black specks are in there. I'll show you here. So as I spin this around a bit, you'll still see them accumulating in the center. Better, much, much better but I think we're about to hit my record. Uh, out of all the radiators that I've cleaned, I think six is the max. And so we're about to hit six with this thermal take. Granted, it's a big, big boy. Um, so I'm not surprised, but it's a lot of work, I'm getting tired. Yeah, I'm sweating a little bit. So yeah, this is uh, number six and that's a lot of black shavings still coming out. Uh, unacceptable amount. It may seem like a little bit, but those little things quickly get caught up in your CPU and GPU water blocks uh, because the fins are really, really fine. So those huge chunks are actually huge. They, they look small on camera, but they're huge compared to the fin sizes uh, that are on your water blocks. Okay, we are at flush number eight and it's looking much, much better. So I'm not comfortable stopping yet, but that's really good now. So after the 10th, yes, 10, five times two, 10, uh, time of shaking, shaking, like a shake weight, um, I thought it was good, right? I thought that this was clear and everything. So I was like, let me just do one more, just one more, just to be sure. And this jerk popped out. Like, look at that big thing. That's huge. Plus some of the other smaller ones. But imagine doing your, your whole loop up, right? Uh, so you use acrylic or glass or it's just something see-through. And then that's just chilling and part of your loop, staring at you, laughing. What a jerk. Okay, this is number 15. So five times three, right? 15. And we're gonna see together while I'm holding the camera. Uh, I could use a third arm to undo this thing, but oh well. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, still more water in there. Let me undo this thing here. Very convenient that it has this. All right, so that allows me to, there we go. See, makes a difference. All right, lucky number 15. We are good to go. Yes, there's like maybe like two little tiny specks in there, but that's, that's perfectly fine now. That's an acceptable amount of crud. So I think that's going to be it for me. So welcome to this edition of 
clean your radiators. <laughs> uh, 15 times of filling and draining, filling and draining, shaking each time in between. Uh, there was a ton of crud in this thing, but now it is squeaky clean. I'm comfortable putting it in the loop now, and then I have to still do all kinds of stuff. So I have to leak test the CPU water block, leak test the GPU water block, um, install the power supply, basically install everything. So this is just the baby steps, because if I didn't do this, there would literally have been a pile of black shavings in my loop floating all over the place, staring at me, you know, just making fun of me for not doing a good job. So clean your radiators, people. Doesn't matter who the brand is, keep flushing it until there's just no more stuff coming out. All right. So if you like this video, I plan on this being a much longer video of interesting stuff, but I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. This was a workout. So again, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, hit the like button, hit the subscribe and tell your friends that the made another video and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.